forget to turn on the spindle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you forget to turn on the spindle. Not so good. So we just ran the first sled um, and it came out pretty decent uh, but obviously there's lots that we need to adjust and so I just took a sharpie and I scribbled a bunch of things for Josh to fix uh, in the program. These holes are too deep, this chamfer is too much. Okay so take a look at this. So Josh just milled the aluminum out of here. And he has this just a 45 or 82 degree chamfer bit in there just to clean it up a little bit. But uh, all in all, it didn't do such a bad job of milling those out of here. Josh doesn't like it because he's used to the big mills with lots of horsepower. But hey, this thing did all right. Obviously, the, the chips here isn't ideal. And we went to touch off the Z and it was kind of funny because uh, it was grounding out through all the chips on the board. Here, look at the board. It's terrible. All the chips was grounding out through the bolts and everything else. <clears throat> so we just kind of had to manually uh, touch off the Z. Well, it, it did work eventually. Oh, oh, we did get it to work, okay. Yeah, it uh, had to just keep sweeping chips away. Hmm. Just keep sweeping away so oh, yeah. there wasn't anything connecting it. So anyway, you can see the quality of cut isn't so spectacular. And we were using an eighth inch end mill. So maybe Josh is wondering if we went to, cause we're gonna be cutting steel. Quarter. We're gonna be cutting quarter. Oh, it was a quarter inch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. but eventually we're gonna be cutting steel on the CNC router. And <laughs> maybe if we go to eighth inch end mill, there'll be enough horsepower and, and rigidity to kind of keep it from chattering too much. We've got a little problem actually because we remember how we changed the uh, whole locations? Ooh! <laughs> but one of these should be able to. Well, two of one these. Two do? of these should be able to. Well, maybe. It's hard to tell exactly where the, the ones are in the middle. We kind of need to flip it over and do it that way. Anyways, these are the tracks, the aluminum tracks, and they work out Absolutely super well. Absolutely no play. Super good. Yeah, no play because we're using nylon set screws and we put a couple different nylon set screws in there and what that does is it allows us to make sure that there's no play in the tolerance uh, from side to side because I hate that there's this other kind of this is the commercial kind of miter slider that I bought and there's lots of play in that and it's hard to adjust these to get no play, but hopefully this will work quite a bit better. What's the problem? It's not gonna work. <laughs> Why is it gonna work? Because there's no way, there's no hole pattern where we can get more than one hole. No. Why? I thought you only moved one hole. Well, we had to shrink the other side in also, so it actually moved both. Okay. 
Remember, this side moved in with the hole. This one moved in, which made that one change. But anyway, so yeah, this one's not going to work. Uh, today was a failure. No. <laughs> no, we got these. This thing's pretty nice. Very nice, actually. But anyways, yeah. So lots of changes being made. But, pretty happy. Also, uh... We're all set basically to run a new sled and I called it uh, the M1, but on the actual uh, sled design, I'm just going to change that to measure one like it is here in the program. I think that looks a little better if you ask me. Maybe that's a little too bold, but we'll see. Um, what do you think? What about the name? Oh, the name's gonna be Quick Jigs, yeah. And that's gonna be right here. And Ooh, hopefully we won't just have text like this, but hopefully by that point, Deborah can get the uh, logo made with some sort of work. You know, it'd be nice to have a saw blade outline or some uh, sort of that would be cool. workshop, something or other. Yeah. Anyways, and then they're ready to sell. And maybe they'll sell a million and maybe they'll sell not much. But I'm wondering that about Kickstarter. Not a million, that would be. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering about Kickstarter though, because uh, if if I set a goal of like thirty thousand to where it'd be like a substantial business, you know, then we wouldn't care paying probably the ten percent to Kickstarter. But if it isn't, we tried, and maybe there will be some momentum that will carry still over into our own business, even if it fails. You can get Josh sometimes too. <laughs> we have to make sure that uh, if it takes us two hours to put together, pack, ship, cut, everything set up, you know, we have to be able to two hours to is make a profit. Pretty short. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but you have to remember, we're going to be paying on top of profits, we're going to be paying the taxes, the PayPal fees, I mean, the, you, you know, you calculate, oh yeah, shipping, materials, you know, labor, but mm -hmm. we're also going to be paying some other things like uh, overhead and all this other stuff. So. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> hey, at least we get the Yeah, I know, it's going to be a great sled. It'll be a good sled. If, if we're the only ones that use it, it'd still be great, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, and you, no, I kind of want to sell some. No. <laughs> well, the amazing thing is that you can't find a sled with the digital readout available for the part length, which is yeah. crazy. And, and it's, yeah, it's great. Like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, not even, besides the digital readout, just the setup is like way better than the other, anything else that I, yeah. I've seen. It's so much more, like you have so much contact on, on each surface mm -hmm. that the parts are held perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and it's made out of, you know, acrylic in mine, which most of them are made out of plywood or or, or something, you know, even particle board or, or something like this, MDF, which is not so ideal. And other tools like this, I mean, these machines are going ahead in leaps and bounds and like, it's like, you, you wouldn't even joke about not having a, you know, a, a digital readout in a new uh, tool, CNC, you know, CNC whatever, machine. but for here, people just feel like it's not something that you need to have precise enough, but a lot of people need to have that precision, like we do. Yeah. Well, this is just a riveting video. <laughs> yeah, but you'll I'm find sure. good parts out of it, right? I'm sure you will. <laughs>